Hello, and you're welcome to yet another lecture in our series of lectures on operating system. And today we shall be talking about operating system operations and modes of operations. Now it is important to note that generally all modern operating systems are event driven or interrupt driven. And by these we mean that if there are no processes for the operating systems uh, to execute, or if there are no input output devices for the operating system to service, or on the other hand, if there are no users to whom uh, the operating system is supposed to respond to, an operating system will naturally just sit quietly waiting for something to happen. Now, events are almost always signaled by the occurrence of an interrupt or a trap, also known as exceptions. Now, it is important to know that a trap or an exception is actually a software-generated interrupt that is caused either by an error, for example, a division by zero, or an invalid memory access. Now, it is important to know that the operating system and the users actually share both the hardware and the software resources of the system. And since both the hardware, the operating system and the users share both the software and the hardware um, resources of the system, a question arises. And the question is, how do we ensure that an error in a user program does not adversely affect or modify the data of another program? Yeah, and this is because we could have several processes that are actually running an operating system, and there could be some interdependencies since sharing actually happens. So the way to address this kind of issue is explained in the next uh, slide. And that is in the design of the operating system to have at least a dual mode of operation or a multi-mode operation. So you can see here I said that the answer or the solution to the above question is in the design of the modes of the operating system or the operation of the operating system and uh, what we tried to do is that we ensure that we distinguish between the execution of operating system code and the user defined code now at the very least in the design of our computer system and the operating system we need to separate uh, we need at least two separate modes of operation so the operating system actually has um, what we call the user mode of operation and then the kernel mode of operation. Now, the user mode of operation is usually depicted in this uh, form, you know, with the word user and then with what we call a mode bit of one, whilst the kernel mode also referred to as the supervisor mode or system mode or the privilege mode has a mode bit of zero and is usually represented in this form kernel with zero in parenthesis. Now it is important to know that this mode bead is actually added to the hardware of the computer system which helps us to signal whenever the operating system is either operating in the kernel mode or in the user mode. Now the diagram here briefly tries to depict how the operating system actually works in these two modes. Now, it is important to know that the dual mode provides us with the means of protecting the operating system from errant users and, and to also protect errant users from one another. As you can see from this diagram, if you have a user process executing, you could see that um, uh, the operating system has been divided into two uh, modes. So that's the user process at the top. And then, I mean, the user process actually, or the mode, and then the kernel mode. So once a user is executing his or a program, as the program is executing, and there is the need for the user program to access, you know, a, uh, a privileged information or command, the user program actually places what we call a system call. And by placing the system call, Control is being transferred to the kernel mode. 
and you can see here that the mode the mode bit has been changed to zero and then of course the kernel of the operating system now executes the system call and when the execution finishes uh, the hardware you know mode bit will then be changed to one and then the control is being transferred or returned to the user mode so you can see here in the user mode the mode bit is one while in the kernel mode the mode bit is zero and um, how does the operating system actually implement uh, this mechanism that i've highlighted here so you can see that this is actually accomplished by designating some of the machine instructions that may be that may cost harm you know to either the hardware or even the user program overwrite any of the program's um, instruction or data as privileged instructions to be executed only in kernel mode so generally in the design of the operating system there are certain instructions that will be designated as privileged mode so that once a system call is being put across to such a service then the operating system will have to switch to the kernel mode and then be executed and when that finishes then um you know transfer is being made to the user mode so in a nutshell this is how you know computer engineers and software developers actually you know design operating system in order to protect um you know errand users from themselves and to also protect the operating system from other uh, you know user software or programs so i hope that the information i've provided in this lecture has been very very informative and i would like to thank you for listening